solving equations, the algebraic way. That's what we're doing. So, what's different with example 1a compared to like three weeks ago? What would you have done three weeks ago? Do you remember what life was like three weeks ago? Excellent. That's like what, one ten, one ten thousandth of your life? Right? Because you're young. Um, well, if we added 4 and 2 over x, what would you do? Okay, that's how we add fractions, right? Find a common denominator. Let's just do off this off to the side. Let's say today's lesson didn't happen. I'm going to tell you another way to think about this. Okay, I'm going to tell you how to do this in a different way of thinking. Okay, this is what's new. Before we just simplified something. You only had one question, that was that perimeter or area where it was equal to something. Okay, and we solved that on our little quest. This is what's new. Before we just maybe simplified that. Okay, so I got a common denominator, and if it helps, that's like a 4 over a 1, right? Okay, so what's my common denominator between x and 1? x. Okay, 1 goes into x, x times 4 times x is 4x. And then you look at this one and go x goes into x 1 time, 1 times 2 is 2. Okay, so now we have this equal thing. That's the difference. And here, what's my common denominator between 1 and x? Well, it's the same thing, isn't it? How many times does 1 go into x? x times 7. How many times does x go into x? 1 times 3. All right. So we added the stuff. That's what we know what to do with that thing. But now what? How do I find out what x is? This is an equation. It's an equality. There's an equal sign. What do I do? Can I simplify this? Can I get rid of that x in the bottom there? What could I do to get rid of the x? Because that would be nice if I didn't have fractions, because everybody loves fractions, right? What do I multiply both sides by to get rid of x? x, okay? Multiply everything by x, because what's x divided by x? It's gone, right? That cancels out, and I have 4x plus 2. This one cancels out, and I have 7x plus 3. And I hope now you could all figure out what x would be, right? Okay, collect your like terms, find out what x is. It's some value that makes this thing work. All right? So you could have done that with the knowledge you already have, but here's a different way of thinking about it, okay? Let's go back and look at these rules here. Solving simple rational equations algebraically. Here's a little flow chart. If the equation consists of a single rational expression on each side, and I've told you this, cross multiply. Okay, get rid of the fractions. Nobody likes fractions. For example, what's x? How would you do that? There is a single rational expression on each side. Okay, cross multiply. 4 times x is 4x, and 2 times 8 is 16. What does x need to be here for this to work? Looks like 4. Okay, and we know 2 fourths is the same as 4 eighths. Okay, this one, however, has two rational things on either side of the equation. So cross multiply here it doesn't really work. All right, here's what you're going to do. If the rational equation is more than one term, i.e., there's two different terms, consider, well, not consider, this is what you're going to do. Multiply each term in the equation by the lowest common multiple of the denominator. Okay? In other words, how did we get rid of this x here? We multiplied this by x. Well, why don't we do that right out of the bat? Okay? 
What's going to happen if I multiply every term in there by x? I'm not going to have any fractions, am I? Okay, so this becomes 4 times x plus 2 over x times x equals 7 times x plus 3 over x times x. What happens to those x over x's? That's 1, that's 1. Okay, and do I get the same thing here? Yeah, okay, so it's a nice little trick. Um, thinking about something in the past that we did this, because this isn't new. Remember if we had... The equation for a line, y equals mx plus b. You remember how I said nobody likes fractions? How do I clear those threes out of there? How do I get rid of those? Multiply everything by three, right? That's gone. That's 2y is 6x plus 1. Okay? That's the same equation. It's going to make the same line, but that's a lot nicer because there's no fraction. Okay, we've done this before. And the question would have been, you know, make this general form. That's y equals mx plus b form, slope intercept form. Make it general form. Okay, well, you can't have fractions in general form, right? Remember that one? It was always in the form ax plus by plus c equals zero. And that was the stupidest way to write. A linear equation because that doesn't tell you anything. It doesn't tell you the slope, doesn't tell you the y-intercept. Okay, it's not very helpful. But that's in like the form that quadratics are written in. Okay? So that's what we're gonna do. Now once you have that, okay, that's gonna be 4x plus 2 is 7x plus 3. We gotta solve this thing for x. Okay? And yeah, there's a non-permissible part here. I haven't done that yet. Like usual, I do it to the end. Okay, what side do you want your x's on? Doesn't really matter. You want them on the left? Put them on the left. You want them on the right? Put them on the right. Minus 7x both sides, so minus 3x. I'm at my x's on the left, so put the numbers on the right. Okay, 3 minus 2 is 1. So it looks like x is negative 1 third. As long as x isn't what? this thing will work, right? What's my non-permissibles? X cannot be zero, because then I'll be dividing by zero and you can't do it, okay? So let's go back up here. What do they else do they say? Use previously learned skills. If it is it becomes a quadratic, we've seen those before. Factor it, hopefully, okay? And always be aware there's domain restrictions, that is, non-permissible values, when dealing with these, okay? It says verify the solution. That means I've got to plug it back in and it works. When verifying solutions, note that the solution cannot be non-permissible value. Otherwise, you can't do it, okay? If I got an answer here of zero, I have to reject that, right? Because it can't be zero. I'll just verify the first one. Okay, so it's telling me x is minus one-third. Therefore, it's got to work. Okay, on the left side, I have 4 plus 2 over x, negative one-third. Is that equal to 7 plus 3 over x? Okay, well, you could put that in your calculator carefully, but we shouldn't, right? We're big kids. How many times does a third go into two? Well, how many times does a third go into one? Three times. So two ones is, that goes in there six times, doesn't it? Right? Okay, so that's four plus, but this is a negative six. How many times does a third go into three? Nine times. Okay, and if you don't see that, well, you know, what do I do here? Let's multiply top and bottom by 3. 
3 divided by 3 is 1. That's negative 1. What's 9 divided by negative 1? Negative 9. Okay? Or, you know, if we're, I don't know, really rusty, what is 3 divided by bracket negative 1 divided by 3? Bracket. Okay? Negative 9. Same thing. Okay, what's this? Minus 2. What's that? Minus 2. Check. It works. Verify it. Okay? But like this is saying, as long as this isn't your non-permissible value, you should be okay. Okay? All right. That's this method. What if you have a single rational expression on each side? What should you do? This says cross multiply. Is this a single rational on each side? So it's saying, hey, cross multiply. You can do that. What if you don't remember that? What did I do here? I multiplied everything by the lowest common denominator. What if you do that? Multiply everything by the lowest common denominator. It'll work. Okay? So that's 5 times this over x plus 1 equals 2 times that over x plus 2. Can I cancel some factors here? Jake, can I cancel some things here? You bet. x plus 1 over x plus 1. x plus 2 over x plus 2. Is that the same thing as cross multiplying? Let's backtrack a bit. Cross multiply. That's what they suggest you do. This times this equals that times that. Did I get the same thing? Looks the same to me, right? That's 5 times x plus 2. That's 2 times x plus 1. Okay, so either way will work. If you're going to remember one thing, that's what you want to remember. Multiply both everything by the lowest common denominator, okay? Which this is worded a little bit differently, okay? Because then you don't have to know there's two different ways to do these. There's just one way, okay? But if you see that that's just a single term, equals a single term, cross multiply is the same thing. All right? So what's x? 5x plus 10 is 2x plus 2, okay, minus 2x there, that's minus 10 there, divide by 3, and x is minus 8 thirds, okay. What's my restricted values with this guy? x cannot be negative 1 or minus 2. Is minus 8 thirds one of those? Nope, so I should be fine. Okay? Now it does say verify it, but I'm just going to be lazy and skip that one. Okay? If I put in that in the equation, it'll work. Okay? All right. State the non-permissible values. Let's do that first. And then solve. X can't be what? What's going to make that denominator zero? Negative 3 over 2. Right? So 2's will cancel out, and that'll be negative 3 
and there it goes, plus three. Right? Okay, everybody okay with that? And here, x can't be what? Negative five thirds. All right? Okay, what's my procedure here? What should I do? How do I solve these? Multiply everything by the two denominators, which is the lowest common denominator. But since this is one term here, one term there, I can cross multiply. So 4x minus 2 times 3x plus 5 is 6x minus 1 times 2x plus 3. Okay? No more fraction. Life is nicer. I have to FOIL this stuff. Okay, so I got 12x squared. Can I take a little shortcut? 20x minus 6x. So how many x? Everybody okay with that? Okay, negative 2 times 5 is minus 10 is... 12x squared, I got 18x minus 2x, that's 16x, minus 3. I got x squareds, I got x's, I got numbers, let's collect all the like terms. What can I do with those x squareds? Nice. Minus 12x squared to both sides. No more quadratic, right? We like that? Don't have to fo factor it, foil it, or whatever. Opposite of foil it, factor it. Try to find the zeros, whatever else. Okay. So where do you want your x's? Eh, let's put them on that side this time. Minus 14x, minus 14x. That's 2x over there. Add 3, add 3. That's minus 7 over there. So x is minus 3.5. Okay. Is that one of my non-permissible values? Got to check. It's not, so it probably will work. Okay. If it asks you to verify it, you should. But okay, all you do is that's going to be ugly, right? We all see that. Yeah. Okay. I don't think it's worth the ten minutes doing that. Okay. Just you just got to check to see it's not one of those. Okay. Any questions on that? Can I cross multiply B? Will? No. Nope. Because I have two terms here. I got this one and this one. So what's my procedure? Blah, 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 blah. Says it up there. Da, da, da. Multiply everything by the lowest common denominator. Okay? Which is T plus 1, T minus 3 times 1, but you wouldn't have to put the 1 there, do we? Okay? Now, at this point, I'm always going to get about 10 kids wanting to take a lot of shortcuts. I can see what that is, okay? Um, my recommendation, recommendation is don't, okay? Write it out. It's worth the 10 seconds. See, don't make a mistake. Everything in here is multiplied by these two. So just write it out. Times... 5t minus 2 over t plus 1. I know one of those cancels out. I don't care. I'm just going to write it out. Minus t plus 1 times t minus 3 times 2t minus 1 over t minus 3 equals this times both of those. And squeeze it in. Okay? You okay, Tamaya? Everything looks good? Grease? Happy? Okay. Pack and slash sale? Almost everything must go. Okay, what factors can I cancel here? T plus 1. What can I cancel here? T minus 3. K 
can't cancel anything there. Okay. Now it's t minus three times five t minus two. I can FOIL that. Okay. So I got five t squared minus two t minus fifteen t plus six. The next part's where you got to be careful. Everyone makes mistakes here because there's a minus sign. Either you can tuck in that minus in the first brackets and make it minus t minus 1, then FOIL it. Or I prefer to FOIL first and multiply everything by that minus 1. Which means you have to put a bracket there. Okay? Okay? 2t squared minus t plus 2t 1 times minus 1 happy Caitlin okay then we have equals okay we can FOIL that multiply everything by the 3 that's t squared minus 3t plus 1t minus 3. I hate pluses and minuses. What should I do next? Try to collect things and get rid of brackets and bring stuff to the other side and try to figure out what t is, or should I be safe and maybe just get rid of the brackets? Okay, can't collect anything here, just leave it. Just get rid of the brackets. Everything in the brackets here is going to flip the signs. Minus 2t squared, minus t, plus 1. Then get rid of the brackets at the end. Everything is multiplied by 3. Okay. Collect like terms. Let's just collect everything on the left. I got 5t squared minus 2t squared. How many is that? 3t squared. Ooh, I think I got one on the right. Isn't that nice? Minus 17t minus t is minus 18t. And then 6 and 1 is 7. Is that? Then what? Shoni? Yeah. Subtract minus 3t squared from both sides. In other words, that's gone. Okay. Uh, minus 18t, let's make it positive. Let's add that to both sides. Okay, that gives me 12t. Let's add 9 to both sides. That gives me 16. Okay, solve it for t. Divide by 12. Okay, can I reduce that? t is 4 thirds. Okay. I didn't do restrictions. As long as that's not minus 1 or 3, which it's not, it should be valid and okay. Okay. Um, that's the last one I got. Do you want to see me do it or not? No. Okay, it's pretty similar to the one that was before it. You just have to do one thing first. What were the restrictions in the last one? Yep. Okay, what would you want to do here first? I'm not going to do it, but let's just see what we would want to do first. What's the lowest common denominator? This is a called a what? 
x plus 4, x minus 4, and that's what you want to multiply everything by, that's going to be your lowest common denominator. Oh, right. Okay. Yes. Is it? 3a to d, and 4 to 6. So again, that's it for rational. I'll give you a little quiz on this stuff in um, a couple days. All right? Tomorrow's absolute value, new chapter.